Welcome to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, transformative studies in the Word of God. I'm Pastor John Harris, and this is my podcast. Our topic today is why do God's children suffer? I bet you've thought about this topic before. We're going to open up the Word of God, take on this transformative study right now. Join me as we dig deep into God's Word. And there's difficulties that have happened to many because of it. And as we heard tonight, we've seen today, uh, so much, so much pain, so much heartache. And why does it exist? And why, why is it there? And in particular for us, why, why, does, uh, why, do, why do we go through these, these situations and these difficulties? Uh, last week, uh, we looked at uh, just uh, a, a, the understanding that it's, God, it's not God punishing us. Today is a day of grace. It's a day of God's reigning His grace upon us. He's, he, he showers it upon us as a nation. I mean, God's grace is here today. It's, uh, it's, it, it's in His favor. He's not punishing. God's not punishing you. He's not punishing us. Uh, we know that all things work together for good. Right, right? All things work together for good to them that love God, to them are called according to His purpose. Uh, we know that uh, He that spared not His own Son but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also do what? Freely give us all things. He, hath begun, he which hath begun a good work in you will what? Continue it. See, God's on your side. Second Corinthians, uh, I believe chapter 8 says that all these things are for your sakes. He's, on, he's for us. He's for our sake. Uh, he's for us. He's on our side. We, we, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 that he always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Is that right? Okay, so it's not God punishing us. So why does the suffering, why is the problems and those difficulties happen? We're going to look at, I think, there, I think in Scripture, and there's probably more, but I see four major reasons that suffering occurs. There's four major, four major components to it. And so tonight I want to look at the, what I call the first one, which is the not good one. The one that, that, that really has no benefit, of no value, and that's the suffering that we bring upon ourselves. And to, to look at those things. So if you go to Galatians 6, uh, this is not God punishing you. This is an issue of what? Just reaping what we sow. That's what Galatians 6 says. Galatians 6 verse 7 says this. Galatians 6 7 says, Be not deceived. What to say there? God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh do what? Reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap what? Life everlasting. And God goes on saying, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in what? Due season we shall reap if we faint not. So the thing, the, 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 the planting, the, the sowing to the, the spiritual end of things must take a little time to see fruit. So be not weary in well-doing, for in due season, you're going to reap. The issue is when we plant to our flesh, it reaps what? Reaps corruption. Okay? It's planting seeds. Planting seeds. Look over at Romans 6 for a second. Romans 6. We're not talking about God bringing punishment. It's a natural result of sin. A natural result of sin. A natural result of living our lives contrary to the way God has designed us to be as children of God. And so because of that, we reap what we sow, not God bringing. It's just we plant seeds, and those seeds grow. Those seeds grow. Romans 6, look at verse um, 19. You'll see this is a continuous theme to this idea. Romans 6, 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. Romans 6, 19. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is what? Death. Death, carnage, corruption. Sowing and, and that, the, the, yielding ourselves to, to the flesh produces fruit. Right? That's the results of something that was planted. It's not God punishing us. We're under grace. But there is something that happens 
You know, God says over in Romans 6, chapter 1, Romans chapter 6, verse 1 says, What shall we say then? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that what? Grace may abound? God forbid. And the reason that God forbid is that even though there's grace today and grace reigns, even though God's showering his favor down upon us, even though sin will not take you to hell because sin was taken care of, and it's an issue of the Son now, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Even that's not going to be the case. Sin still produces something in a believer's life. And that is corruption. It's death. It's, it's heartache. It's pain. There's things like that that happen. You know, if I go out and I do something, you know, I go out and I drink myself to the point of intoxication, I jump in a car and I drive down the highway and I slam into a tree, who did that? Did God punish me for drinking? No, that was the fruit of my own labor. Okay. I planted a seed. In the process, I could hurt others as well. Look over in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Look at verse 1. And, you know, when you read Scripture, we, we, get, we, get, we get very excited about verse 1. But if you take a look at what it, said, what it says in the opposite end of things, you'll see something. Romans 8, 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them, what? Which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but what? after the spirit is there condemnation to you if you walk after the flesh though see you walk after the spirit there's no condemnation now we're not talking about from God as condemnation it's not that's not talking about condemned to hell you need to study what the word means it doesn't mean that it means it means problems difficulties heartaches uh, uh, hard things look at verse 13 says for if you live after the flesh you shall what you shall die as you live after your flesh you follow after. You just live that way. You're going to die. The end of it is not good. But if you through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. Look at Philippians 3. Here's the result of, of, of a couple individuals. Or not a couple individuals, a number of people. That uh, Philippians 3, verse 17. And you'll see that it starts out with the flesh. And then the Bible says what the end is. We're right at the edge of going in the... Do you hear that? Or is that just me? I have my dog whistle going here. I hear, I hear a high-pitched whine there. There you are. Philippians 3, verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk as ye have us, for an example. You, you pick out people who walk like us, Paul says. And look at verse 18 says, For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is what? Destruction. See, their end is destruction, whose God is what? Belly. And whose glory is in their shame, who mind what? Earthly things. They started off minding earthly things. That's how it started. And then what happened was that they started glory in their shame. And then, they began to, then, then God became their belly. And then the end is destruction. Come to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. See, a lot of suffering we needlessly go through because we bring it upon ourselves. And a lot of that suffering is heartache. It's not, you know, it, it, it's, some, it, the suffering can be physical, it can be mental, it can be emotional. It can be all those things because of what we plant. And some of the seeds that we plant, you know, God teaches a lot of things by looking out about the world about us. You know, not every seed produces fruit like that, does it? How long does it take for uh, an apple tree to produce fruit? Plant an apple seed. Takes a while, right? Asparagus. Two years. Okay. Um, in the, in the, in a marigold in the spring. A few weeks, you start having some things popping forth, right? You start seeing fruit much quicker. So some seeds, they blossom, they come to fruit very quickly. Some do not. Some take a longer time. And so some of the things that we have right now going on in our lives, the difficulties and the problems that we have, are from seeds we may have planted 30 years ago, 20 years ago, maybe in last week. So don't be surprised. Look at James chapter 1. First, start in verse 13. There's a truth here. It says, Let no man say when he is tempted, tested, tried, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, as he doesn't do evil against you. Neither tempteth he what? 
any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth what? Sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth what? Death. There's a natural pathway here. It's not that God is bringing it down upon us. It's a natural result of sin. Sin corrupts. Sin degrades. Sin tears things down. Sin bears fruit that is bad fruit. It's rotten. It's decaying. It, uh, it's, 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 it's difficulties. It's problems. Some sins affect just you. Some sins affect many others. For instance, David's sin affected an entire family. And he's where, his, where his, his children rebelled. One of them tried to kill him. Solomon's sin split an entire nation. Some sins go big. Some, and so it costs lots and lots of problems. Proverbs chapter 14. Go to Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs 14 verse 12. See, there's lots of things we try... But if it's not God's way, if it's contrary to God, if it's in rebellion to God, it's not planning, it's not following after the Spirit. It's not uh, sowing, reaping life everlasting. It's sowing to the flesh. Proverbs 14 verse 12 says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the, but the end thereof are what? The ways of death. Uh, there are things that we plant, the things that we do. Sometimes we think, eh, it's not too bad. I can get away with this. It's not a big deal. But the answer of are the ways of death. It's a pathway that heads down the wrong path. It leads to uh, destruction. Go over to Colossians 3. Colossians 3. Not all those things are what you might think. You know, I'm not talking about necessarily all kinds of physical uh, manifestations of sin, like fornication, adultery, and lasciviousness, and stuff like that. Some of these things are less than that, but they're just as real seeds that we plant. And we wonder why problems happen. It's not God bringing down the problems. Sometimes we just plant them. Colossians 3, verse 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, and here's the, the biggies, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and a covetousness, which is idolatry, it says, for which say, things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. See, it comes on them, but see, not on you. It says, into which ye also walked sometime at one time when ye lived in them. That's before ye came to know the Lord. Verse 8 says, but now also put off these things. Ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not to one another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man which was renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Put away these things as well. Things of like a certain, certain type of way we treat each other. Those are planting seeds. And they sometimes get back, come back and get you. Okay, they plant, they root, they take root. You know, um, in the, uh, the pyramids, they found seeds that were 3,000 years old. You know, seeds of various crops that the, that the Egyptians had. You know, they put them in a little water and dirt with them. Guess what happened? They brought forth fruit. Seeds don't go away. What we, learn to, what we need to learn to do as saints of God is when we see the plant starting to root up because we planted it, is you just don't cut it off. You've got to get down to the root and take care of it. And God does that. That's why he says to mortify. Is this on when I'm over here? It's off. Okay. That's good. I didn't hear anything coming back. God says to mortify, therefore, the things that are there. Put them to death. Take them out and root them out. You know, just like dandelion. You know, you ever just rip up a dandelion? What happens if you don't get the whole way down? You don't kill the root. Okay, it keeps coming back. Well, God says to put to death, mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. As put them to death. And, and, and the way to do that is by doing things God's way. Look over at Philippians chapter 4. Well, what did, you know, Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes, what did he say about life? He says, vanity of vanities, all is Vanity. What's the only thing that's not vanity? By the way, vanity is to no profit. It's just empty. It's not good. What's the only thing? What was the conclusion of the whole matter that Solomon said in chapter 12, verse, I believe, 13? 
He says what? He says the conclusion of the whole matter is what? To fear God and to what? Keep his commandments. Do it God's way. And you know what? And then there's profit. Then there's true fruit. Fruit that doesn't produce suffering, difficulties. What did I tell you, you go? Philippians 4? Okay, I'll go there. Philippians 4. Look what it says in uh, verse 8. Finally, brethren, by the way, after talking about, hey, you, you got problems, you got difficulties, God says, hey, you take them to me because I'm the God of all grace. God's also the God of all what? We'll see that we're going to, if you don't know it, we'll know it in a couple of days, a couple of weeks. God of all comfort. He's a God of all grace. And he's a God of all comfort. He has, he has a commodity market on it. He has it all. And, he's, and so when we, when we have difficulties, go to him. Even if those difficulties are the result of your own doing, because then God will help you hew it up and, and cut it out. Verse 8 says this, though. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, Think on these things. You want to dwell upon something, dwell upon these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, what? Do. Do it. Do what God says. And then you have something with you. You have the God of peace. What does it say there? The God of peace shall be what? With you. A very real presence of God in your life. Part of the reason why we, when, when we go out about walking in our flesh, and we're sowing things, you know, hey, I live under grace. I mean, I've heard it. I've heard it, not necessarily from people here, but I've heard it from other places. That church, church, well, hey, you know, God, we're, it's, it's a day of grace. I can do what I want. Well, you may do what you want, but you'll pay an awful price. But it's not God doing it. He's just allowing the fruit to be produced so that you learn, I guess. But he says there, do it and the God of peace shall be with you. If you don't do, the God of peace is not necessarily with you. You're not with the God of peace. And so if you don't have the God of peace with you, you know what? It's sort of hard, isn't it? If the God of peace is not right there with you, then you have no peace. And that's true suffering. If all there is is heartache and pain. You need peace. You need peace. You need God's presence in your life. If we don't do it, we have no peace. We don't, we don't, we don't have that protection from His presence. Because we're off walking the path that we ought not be walking. It's not with him. And so we plant our seeds. And they bear fruit. And even when we figure it out. Even when we figure it out. There's still fruit to be born. Because we planted seeds. And every one of you knows that. There's things that you've done in your life. You're not willing to tell other people. And it bears fruit. Time and time again. But just keep going to God. God will cut it down. He'll uproot it. He'll take it out. Look over at 2 Corinthians chapter 13. 2 Corinthians 13. Those seeds are things like, it can be anger. They can be strife. They can be discontent. They can be bad doctrine. They can be uh, uh, physical sins. They can be a lot of things. You know what they are? Things that God says don't do. The things that don't lead to a godly life. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 11. Paul's conclusion to the Corinthians who were they living the greatest lives in the world? Were they living the greatest lives in the world? No, but here's his conclusion to them. Solomon said, here, listen to the conclusion of the matter. He said, fear God and keep his commandments. Here's Paul. He said in Corinthians 13, verse 11, he says, finally, brethren, here's the conclusion of the matter. Farewell. He says this, be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And then as a result. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. You want to feel God's love? You want to feel that, 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 his presence of his love and his peace in your life? Then be perfect. Well, how do you want to be? Be perfect. Be perfect. What's that mean? Well, it means to grow. Mature. What second? Look over to 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy 3. It says, be of good comfort. I mean, be about helping others, comforting. Well, the comfort that God's given you, we'll see. Be of one mind. Don't be contentious. 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Live in peace as much as lieth in you. 
live in peace. Second Timothy 3, verse 16. Be perfect. Well, what you need to do is this. Second Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. See, God's word is what uproots those planting issues that we do. God's word is what keeps us from planting those seeds of discontent, those seeds of strife, the seeds of uh, physical lusts that bring forth death. God's word does that because it teaches us it's wrong and then it gives us reproof. It, it stands us upright. It, it, it corrects us, says this is the way you ought to go. And then it instructs us in righteousness. It actually pushes us on the way the way we ought to go. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says that the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Right? Divides asunder the soul, and, uh, the soul and the spirit. Dividing the joints and the marrow. The thoughts and the intents of the heart. That's God's word. But notice what the purpose of God giving his word is. See, what verse, what's verse 17 start with? That. That's the purpose. Why is God, see, God gave, God inspired all his word, and it's profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction, and righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, that you might grow. That's why, you, by the way, you know you have the word of God today, because God wants, you're as one of his children. And so he gave his word when? Well, you must still have it, for otherwise you could not complete his purpose which is that we would grow, that we'd mature, that we'd be, be who we ought to be in Christ. And God's word does that. The man of God be perfect, thoroughly furnished, equipped unto all good works. One well, of the major reasons, by the way, this is not the good reason to suffer. And it has a remedy. It's called just letting God's word work in our lives to change us, to mold us, to shape us into who we ought to be study it, to dwell upon it. And God says in 2 Timothy 2, we, we, we're, we're big on that word study, right? Study. But why? Study to show thyself approved unto who? Pastor Ken? God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. In front of who? God. Rightly dividing the word of truth. See, God has a desire that we study, to know what he's doing, and to take it in and to let it work in us. In Colossians 3, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, because it'll change you. It'll take you from sowing those seeds that produce bad fruit to where you begin sowing seeds that produce good fruit. Galatians 6 says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall also reap. For he soweth to his flesh, shall his flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit, shall the Spirit reap life everlasting. Right? Reap life everlasting. What's, uh, go over to 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. God's Word is the answer to that. And by the way, we all planted those seeds, I'm sure, because... God says, we're all sinners. We come short of the glory of God. So we've all planted seeds. Some of those seeds are maybe have left emotional issues or, or uh, they've left physical issues. But 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, what does it say there? Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For what reason? For, you know, for, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. As you let God's word work and your plant, and that's planting involves being steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, God says there's something of profit to that. Okay? That light, reaping life everlasting. And I want to get, get us there and talk about that uh, in two weeks probably. Okay? So anyways, bad seed, not good. The way to avoid it is to get into God's word and let God's word work on your heart. Now there's another reason why we have suffering. And by the way, the rest of these have profit. The rest of these have some profit. They may not seem like it, but there is profit to these. Another issue is go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. As uh, Solomon said, all is vanity. 
Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. That is, everything's empty. But he did say something else in Ecclesiastes. While you go to Romans chapter 8, I'm going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Read one verse to you. If I can get there. Here, Romans chapter 8, verse 18, right? That's where I want you to go. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 8 says this. Notice this. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that comes is vanity. That is, even in a life filled with joy, even knowing the Lord and being filled with his joy, there is darkness. See, we all go through hardships and difficulties. You're not alone. No matter how much I smile, there are difficulties. There are troubles. There's pain. There is always darkness, even in a life of many joys. Romans chapter 8 says, though, verse 18, For I reckon, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are what? Not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now, the sufferings of this present time aren't worthy to be compared with what's going to happen in the future. See, there's real suffering, right? For a saint. It's not from God. You're in his favor and his love. We can plan it and bring it upon ourselves. But the other issue is we are part of a problem. Something that Adam conceived way back when. The, the whole creation that exists about us, the one that we are in, is in pain. Look what it says here in Romans chapter 8. Let's continue in verse 19. It says, For the earnest expectation of the creature, that's God, all of God's creation, waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. It's, there is, there, the, all of creation is waiting for a day when God's sons are revealed. Verse 20, For the, cre the creature, the creation, was made subject to what? Vanity. It's going to nothing. Not willingly... But by reason of him who subjected the same in hope. That is, all the creation has been put in subjection, the bondage of corruption. Go back to Genesis chapter 3. Don't go there, but you go back there in your mind. Chapters, verses 17 through 19, where God says the ground is going to bring forth, you're going to labor by the sweat of your brow, and the ground is going to bring forth thorn and, and, uh, and, and uh, hard stuff. <laughs> I can't think right now. Verse 20, verse 21 says this, but it says, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation, what? Groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And it says, and not only they, but we, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves Waiting for what? The adoption to it, the redemption of our body. We're looking for that day when we're rescued, we're delivered physically from this present world, from this bondage of corruption. You know the reason why we get cancers? I mean, you know, you could live the healthiest life from the day you were born. You can still get cancer. You can still have heart attacks. It's because our bodies are corrupt. They're falling apart. Look in the mirror recently. You know, Sharon Banks said to me the other day, I mean, I thought it was sort of a neat compliment. I thought it was, I thought it was a, uh, I thought she was saying something nice to me. And then I realized she was being Sharon. And she's not here tonight for me to pick on. But Sharon said to me, she said, hey, are you highlighting your hair? And I thought, well, I've been out in the sun a lot. And I thought maybe, because it does get lighter in the summertime. But see, Sharon's a little taller than I am. And what Sharon was noticing, that there's gray, white stuff starting to form in there okay and I, I walked away from her thanking her and she didn't even tell me she was mean being mean to me okay I said I, my wife and somebody else had to point out the fact that what she was really talking about okay anyways we're all we're all falling apart and it's not because of sin our sin that we've done it's not mean it's not because we've done something terrible that that some disease happens uh, if uh, Penny's not here tonight She's miserable because she's got a head cold. When she gets a head cold, she's miserable. She's just, she, just, she doesn't feel good at all. Okay? She didn't do anything bad to get this other than probably, I don't know, hang around somebody who had it that brought it to her. Okay? 
it's, it's part of this life we live. We're, the, the, this world is in a bondage of corruption. It's decaying around us. Nobody's ever seen a really a rose the way that rose will look when the bondage of corruption is lifted. Nobody's ever seen the, a flower of a dogwood tree without the bondage of corruption where it's decaying. Everything before us is dying around us. All is vanity. That means everything goes from something and just decays to dust shall it return. And that's what's happening to us. And so it's not some, something we've done. It's an issue we're part of a, a creation that's falling apart. And so a lot of suffering is because of that. Especially a lot of our physical sufferings are because of that. But some of our emotional and the, the things we think about, the problems we go through, they're also part of that bondage of corruption. Because I want you to pay very close attention to the first word in verse 26 of Romans 8. What's Romans 8, 26 say? Likewise. Like what? Well, just like, if you go back to the verses before here, see, we're going to be delivered from the physical presence of the pain and the bondage of corruption and the heartaches and the, and the physical difficulties we have, as Pastor Ken said, what is baldness, bunions, and bifocals? What, what, I forget what those are. My, by the way, I went to the eye doctor last week, right bef on Wednesday, and uh, I, he was noticeably distressed that my eyesight has not changed in two and a half years. I guess that meant I didn't buy, have to buy glasses or anything. But then he did inform me that I'm in my 40s now and that probably in about two years I need bifocals. I don't even own, I mean, I own glasses to, to, to look at the computer, but I don't need them to read. Okay, I can still read like here, here, you know, wherever you put it. But in two years, I'm going to have bifocals, he told me. So I felt pretty good about that. Okay, well, anyways, it says there that, that we're, that we're going to be delivered. The, the Spirit, the, the first, we're the first of the spirits. We're, there's, there's this adoption. To what, we're going to be redeemed from this planet. The rapture is going to come, take us. But likewise, the Spirit right now does what? In verse 26. So the Spirit also helpeth what? Our infirmities. And that's not talking about our physical issues. The, the rapture is going to take us out, the adoption, that physical uh, uh, manifestation as being a son of God. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself... Interse uh, make his intercession for us with what? Groanings. He agonizes over us and over our needs. And many of those are emotional and, and mental issues that we have, our, our thinking. He searcheth the hearts, knowing what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. God's Holy Spirit is working on those things, but we have emotional issues there. We have emotional groanings and, 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 and issues. Anyways, and it's part of being part of a sin cursed creation because we have this flesh and we just keep falling apart. You know, where our mind strays. You ever try to pray? As you pray, you know, it takes a lot to keep focused sometimes because there's all this stuff around us happening and it pulls us away. Anyways, suffering happens for more than these two reasons. We're going to talk about another one next time. Or actually two more maybe. We're part of a sin-cursed creation. By the way, that's not your fault. You're just part of it. And so a lot of the difficulties, especially the physical things we hear about, and it's not, you know, and that's why, by the way, you can't judge if somebody sinned to have that problem as they planted a seed sometime in the past or if it's just part of their, their sin-cursed creation that we're in. See, God knows you know, not, God's not bringing wrath, He's, it's, but it's a natural result of a natural body that's corrupt and falling apart. So the physical things we go through, uh, it's going to happen to all of us until the Lord comes and takes us. But notice that the sufferings of this present world are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You've been listening to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, Transformative Studies in the Word of God. I hope you've enjoyed the study. Please subscribe, like, and comment. This podcast is available on many podcast platforms. Just search on the title. Now, until next time, fight the good fight of faith and God's best to you.